Hi, thanks for joining me today on my channel. Now today I'm going to show you a mess kit. Now I've shown you quite a few mess kits on this channel and it's kind of a misnomer. Right? Everybody wants to go for well, what's the best, what's, what's the ultimate, what is the number one? Well, you're not really going to get that on this channel because in my perspective, my personal feelings is that you pick the tool for the specific job that you have at hand and sometimes money comes into play and all that. So it just depends on what you have access to. And I think the better question is what can you personally do with the tools that you have access to? That's my personal take. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you a historic mess kit today that lasted quite a while. It was for sale for a long period of time, uh, but eventually it was the cost that became a preventer for it to go longer than what it did, but also the company went a completely different direction. Now here on this table, these are all the various mess kits that I've shown you, whether it be my 19th century backpacking stove, my World War I mess kit, and this past month's Theros mess kit, and the tried and true Boy Scout type mess kit. Now, out of all of these, I can quickly determine which ones I prefer to use uh, in most scenarios. It's not going to be my cool backpacking stove. It's not going to be this. Now, if I'm just going someplace and I need something to hold food or whatever, then this will do the job. But it's pretty limited because you only have two pieces to it. I want to stand by that my favorite mess kit is going to be the Theros mess kit because you can do everything with it. It even has its own uh, fuel type wind barrier. So you can put a fuel canister in there, you can put fuel tablets in there, uh, you can even put coals in there, and you can use it to cook on. Now the tried and true Boy Scout mess kit I think is awesome. Like I, in fact, mess kits from around the world try to emulate this same style of mess kit. Um, and they're still producing it today. So I think this is the, the winner for most people because you have the frying pan, you have your plate, you have your little pot, you have your cup. You know, that's pretty much everything you need, right? And it's in a compact size. But the mess kit we're gonna to talk to about today is the Stopple or Upton mess kit. Now, depending on which one of these that you find, you'll find a different moniker on it. It could say Stoppel, and it could say Upton. Now, if you go to my website, www.honorableoutfitters.com, I actually have a write-up on this kit, and it goes into detail and goes into the history. Not the in-depth history, but if you look at my bibliography, there's another website on there that gives you the whole run-up of the company and how this is related to something you might have in your laundry room or maybe even in your kitchen, Whirlpool Company. Now, I'm not going to discuss about the history and how that's all tied. I'll leave that for my website, but it's kind of interesting how it all worked out. But Stoppel was the inventor of this mess kit. And then, and Upton did a great job with marketing it, not only during World War I, because it was patented in 1915, so it was right there in the prime, World War I, soldiers were using these things. Then the Boy Scouts adopted it. Now, the Boy Scouts didn't sell this quite as long as the Theros mess kit. You can also find this mess kit in a lot of different sporting magazines like Field and Stream. So um, very much like the Theros company, it capitalized not only on World War I, but also the vibrant and the growing motor car movement and the camping movement and the travel movement and, and the sporting industry. So being at the right place at the right time really worked out. Okay, I'm gonna change the camera so we can open this up and you can see how this is pretty cool. So right here it says, made by the Upton Machine Company, St. Joseph, Michigan, USA. Now, when I first got this, I thought that this was tinned steel, but it's actually been nickel. This is not 
10. And a lot of the seams are folded seams instead of being soldered, which is pretty cool. As we open this up, we have our cup. You can see the two little holes right there. That's where a wire handle is going to go. And then this releases. So we have our handle for our cup. This is not the original. This is one that I fabricated based off of an original that a friend of mine, uh, Kent Vining, Sergeant Vining has a YouTube channel. He sent me the specs to his, and this was my best mock-up that I could do. Uh, so you should check out Sergeant Vining's channel because if you like my stuff, I'm sure you'll like his. So we have this pan here. This is essentially going to be the frying pan or a plate. We have this folding lockable grill right there. We have this handle for the frying pan. And if need be, you could also use this for your cup. And we have this little hanger for our pot here. For our grate, if we just use our fingers and undo that locking mechanism, everything folds out. So you can see that it has the four legs that goes into the ground and it has your tiny little pot. Now this is about eight inches by 10 inches. And I made up a special wooden stand just so we can see how this gets set up. Hey, really quick, if you like this video so far, if you find this stuff interesting, please do me a favor and go ahead and click like. That way other people find it and you are helping them out as well. It does them a big favor. I appreciate it. Okay, so as we take our grate, now you have the choice to either do it this way or the other way. The problem with this is that you have these little ridges here that would be up. So it kind of get in your way, but also as weight gets down, it could fold in on itself. So we're going to take that into consideration. We're going to do it the other way. Now we'll have a nice flat cooking surface to work with. I drilled a couple holes in a board here. We're going to pretend is our dirt. As we stick those in, now we got ourselves a fire rack. So if you can imagine fire being underneath of this or coals, now we have a cooking surface. So we can take our wire for our frying pan here. Now, if there's some weight in this, the wire handle here is going to be strong enough that it's not going to tip down. So we can have something like that. We can use our cup, put a little wire into the loops here, just like the frying pan. And now I have myself a cup. And can't forget our soup pot. So this little Y piece, there's a couple holes on the sides, but now we can dangle or we could put on our fire here and heat up some coffee. Now something that the different articles and the advertisements show is that this pot was advertised that it could slide in between this little handle here. Now when I first got it, it became pretty apparent that it was never done before with this particular kit. So I did have to widen this wire here just a little bit so that this could slide in. So just a smudge. And now we can put the pot in that opening. So now the fire that's underneath of this can also heat up your soup or your water or anything like that over here. That way it frees up this premium space on your grate to use for your cup or your frying pan. So it gets kind of crowded when you do that. Um, and depending on which of these stopple kits that you get, it could have a more rounded. This one, uh, as far as I can tell, has always been pretty angular like so. Now, Stoppel also made other versions of the kit that were two person. So it's the exact same kit, but it came with two cups, and two frying pans, and one grate. So now you can cook for a total of two people. 
What's really cool about this kit here is that you can use this as a baker. So if you made up some biscuits, as you know, I like making biscuits. Maybe you got some cookies that you're going to make or some bread or something else. You can take your tray here, put your dough, slide it inside like so, and you got this that'll go over it. And now you have yourself a nice little Dutch oven. And it's pretty airtight. You can put that into your fire, bury it with some coals, and you've got yourself a really cool baker. And you can just slide that out, and now you have your bread. So this is a really neat kit because it is all in one. I don't like how narrow this is. Um, that's my biggest beef with this kit. The cup is actually a pretty generous size, especially in considering um, other kit cook kits of the same time period. The cups tend to be more like teacups instead of, well, at least our contemporary size coffee cups. Now, I can't cook on this because it does have solder and it is kind of rust in some spots, which I could clean up the rust. For an over a hundred year old kit, I'm not comfortable using this for a demonstration where I'm going to eat because the solder could be a lead solder. Um, there's just some things I'm not willing to do for history. Now I do know some tinsmiths, so maybe I could have a tinsmith recreate this for me. That way I can use it in an actual demonstration. But this is a really, really neat kit. Um, it's one of the more unique kits because it does have a foldable grate. Now, I watch a lot of people kind of um, tweak mess kits. You know, the common mess kits that you see at your big box stores. And most notably, I'd say the Stanley cook kit that you see. It's got like a cup essentially. And people will pack that in with all sorts of things. One of my favorite YouTubers, uh, from Waypoint Survival, he did a great, very similar to this. It's all packable um, for those type of cook kits. And I love how even today, with our contemporary camping and camp craft and bush craft and things like that, we are still kind of reusing ideas that was used a hundred plus years ago. You know, there's there's certainly innovation in how you use different things and do different things, um, but the core concept is still there. And I think that is so neat from a historical perspective, someone who loves history, who loves reenacting, and who loves seeing cause and effect and relationships like that, it, it just warms my heart significantly to see stuff like that. So this is, again, the Upton Mess Kit. Uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas to modify your own mess kit or to check out what other mess kits are out there that might be similar to this that you might like. Um, the, the oven, I think, is definitely a highlight as well because even my Boy Scout mess kit, you can use it as a Dutch oven effectively. The problem is, is that the, it's not exactly a tight seal in comparison to this. So sometimes you can get a little ash in there if your mess kit has been out of shape just a little bit, just a little bit. Now, I hope you like this video. If you do like this mess kit, there's two videos I suggest that you watch next. There's this one, which is my favorite, the Theros mess kit. That's what I did last month. And there's this one here, the Boy Scout mess kits. And I show you how to make a 1925 recipe in it. So check those out. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss note to your loved ones. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. Take care.